Before we talk about the National Geographic Hands-On Explorer Challenge taking place in Montana, we would like to learn a bit about you. We understand that you have your own radio show on National Geographic Weekend Radio. Can you tell us about it? I have a show that we've been doing for four years, four and a half years, called National Geographic Weekend. And by this cleverly titled show, you know that it airs on weekends around the country on syndicated radio stations. Also appears every week as a free podcast on iTunes. It's also on XM Sirius Satellite Radio every Sunday at noon Eastern. And then you can find it on our geographic website. But the show is primarily me interviewing people who do stuff with National Geographic. And then I, at the end of the show, I always tell a little story about one of my own trips. Cool. So you answer my other question. <laughs> What came first, your interest in travel, nature and animals, or a career in broadcasting? Whew, boy, am I glad you got to the second part of that question, because I thought you were going to say, which came first, the chicken or the egg, and I knew I was going to have trouble with that answer. <laughs> but uh, I would say that it was pretty early on that I wanted to be in the outdoors. I grew up in West Texas, so the outdoors there meant mesquite bushes and rattlesnakes and jackrabbits but I was fascinated by what little wildlife we had, but mostly but just being out there. I was in the Boy Scouts uh, and got actively involved in it. It was an Eagle Scout and spent a lot of time camping out uh, in a very active troop, and we went all over Texas and New Mexico setting up campsites and long trips. So that made me want to be in the outdoors. I realized that, but also by the time I was in middle school, I knew I wanted to be a journalist because I thought just watching the evening news, I said, those guys are where everything interesting in the world happens. And that's the best way to be there. So I'm going to be a journalist so I can be where things interesting happen. Insatiable curiosity got me early. That sounds really cool. Let's talk about the Hands-On Explorer Challenge. Have you gone on all of the trips? This year we just had our sixth Hands-On Explorer Challenge. Uh, the first one was to the Galapagos. I missed that one, and when, when I found out what great trips they were, I started begging, and they let me go on the rest of them. So I've now been on five of them, South Africa, Australia, the Caymans, and uh, Peru, and now in Montana. And they're all unique places, but they are equally interesting, fascinating uh, from wildlife and the, the ecology and the uh, topography and the people we meet, uh, they're, they're all wonderful trips, and the kids are so bright and interested that I like going on them because it'd be terrible if you had kids who were just bored by everything in life, and these kids want to know, and we want to tell them about our planet. That's what we do at National Geographic. We try to inspire people to care about the planet. Cool. So do you have a favorite trip that you've gone on with the Hands-On Explorer Challenge? <laughs> well, that'd be unfair to the kids that might hear this if I picked a favorite. So that's like having your own children. You can't pick a favorite in front of them. But as you know, your parents, after you go to bed at night, they sit and t talk to each other about which one's their favorite of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> um, is this your first time visiting Montana? No, I started coming to Montana back in the... Well, long before you were born, but back in the uh, 70s. And I came here a lot. I used to work for NBC News based in Los Angeles, and I just said, since I'm on the West Coast, I claim the national parks on the West Coast as my territory and into the Rocky Mountain area. So I came here a lot with them. And then the early days at National Geographic, I had a television show called National Geographic Explorer that we filmed on location each week. And so we came to beautiful places, and that meant Montana was on our list for frequent visits. Cool. What has surprised you most about Montana? Uh, well, I don't know that because I've been coming here so much, I'm not surprised. But I think what would be surprising to people who haven't visited it is uh, how beautiful the Rocky Mountain regions are. To any place you go in the world, you can't surpass it. You might find some place equally beautiful, but Montana just has a lot to offer. It's people who don't live here might think it's cowboys or plains or buffaloes, but it's it's really the, yeah. some of the best wildlife in America and gorgeous peaks and hiking trails and beautiful rivers and lakes. It's, it's just got everything you could want. To, and that's why people keep talking about Montana as their dream place to retire. And if you know they want to come spend the rest of their life here, it must be a good place to come spend the beginning of your life. <laughs> yes, Montana is very beautiful. <laughs> What is it like to travel with such a large group of kids? Well, the important thing with 
kids when you're traveling with them, I did this with my own kids, is you need water stops. And by water stops, I mean places where they can either swim or raft. They want to get in the water. They want to experience, and they need water fights. So we started this trip with a water fight on a rafting trip, and I think that set the tone. <laughs> and as long as you have that kind of understanding, you're going to have a great time with kids. They like to play. you got to have entertainment. It's a... Uh, it's an educational trip in a way, but nobody wants to pay attention to the lesson if it's not fun and enjoyable, so that's what we try to make it. And that means I get to be a kid again. And that's like a miracle. <laughs> Sounds fun. Were you able to read some of the winning essays for the Hands-On Explorer Challenge, and were you involved in the selection of the winners? Uh, don't blame me if you didn't get picked, but uh, yes. We have a staff at National Geographic because we have thousands of entries that narrows it down to the what they consider to be the top, I think it was the top 50, and then I start in a small group of us, of which I am one of them, starts reading. And then we, we put our points on it, and then we look and see who got the highest points. It's a, like a judging contest. It's like American Idol <laughs> without the singing. <laughs> Sounds pretty fair to me. Um, what kind of animals have you seen, seen along the way on this trip? We had a great grizzly bear encounter on uh, Lake St. Mary. Uh, we were in the boat, so we could watch it from a safe distance, but we could watch it from fairly close, and we watched it come all the way down a ravine in the mountains, come to the edge of the lake, uh, sniff around, walk along the shoreline, get in the water, swim, get out of the water, get back in the water. It was just an incredible 20-minute encounter with a grizzly bear. Some of the kids, uh, depending on where they were, saw a moose in a river. Uh, we've seen a lot of mountain goats up close. We've had squirrels try to share lunch with us, ground squirrels. We've seen a lot of prairie dogs, uh, uh, marmot, mink, eagles, osprey, pelicans, uh, we have not seen a mountain lion. Some kids saw a black bear. So we've had a good sampling of what Montana has to offer. And then we saw a few of the uh, local people who live here, and they were some of the wildest things we've seen, frankly. <laughs> I like think Jack Hanna. Do you know Jack Hanna lives here? And they don't get any wilder than that. <laughs> I think you've seen, you've seen some... Bleh. I think you've seen more animals than some of the locals here have. <laughs> Speaking of animals, we have watched some of your videos on YouTube from Wild Chronicles and Explorer. Show some of some showing your close some showing you close up and personal with lions and tigers, just to name a few. Have you ever had a scary encounter with a wild animal? Uh well, sometimes it's after it happens and you realize how close it came to being a problem that that's you're more scared afterwards than during the during the event itself. If you're doing it right, you want to focus on what I need to do to get out of this. So just this past year, we were doing the stories in Southern Africa on uh, rhino poaching, which is a huge problem that's only increased in the last four years. I think four years ago, only 13 rhino were poached, which is a man killed illegally, which is a manageable number. Last year, it was already up to almost 450, and this year, it's going to be well over 500 rhinos illegally poached. So in doing this story, we wanted to get out and get close to uh, rhinoceros and while tracking a black rhino he came out of the bush and came charging full speed toward us and stopped about where we measured his feet footprints from where I was standing were six feet in front of me when the uh, rhino stopped so I've had that happen I've been charged by a hippo I've been charged by elephants uh, which tells me something I'm I must not know what I'm doing if all these animals are charging me <laughs> What is your funniest or most embarrassing animal encounter? Uh, most embarrassing animal encounter? Well, obviously, if you handle enough animals, you know you're going to get bitten, scratched, and pooped on. <laughs> so maybe the being pooped on is the most embarrassing when it happens. <laughs> if you picked up a s snake that was recently fed and suddenly it decides to mm. release the remains on your clothing. Oh um, and I did... Well, I guess I can tell this. One time we were working with a lion. It was in a rescue center, so it was a captive lion. It was in the United States, but it was in a facility that rescues these animals that have been raised in conditions they shouldn't be raised. Well, they shouldn't be pets in the first place. And so some people get them and think they're going to have a nice pet, and then they realize they've got a big cat on their hands, and it's dangerous, and they don't know what to do with it. So these, fortunately, there's some rescue places to take them in and at least give them a place to live the rest of their lives. And we were filming at one, and we had a big male lion, and male lions are notoriously temperamental anyway. And first he tried to 
snap at me and missed. And then he came and he grabbed me by the arm but didn't bite down hard and I fell back and got out of the way. But being a slow learner that I am, I came up like you would a dog and put the back of my hand up trying to make friends with him and let him know. And suddenly he went ah! and reached out and bit and his tooth went right through the front of my jeans right by the fly and ripped my jeans. Oh, so that was pretty geez. close. Uh, but he didn't hit anything, fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, that's really great. Well, thank you for being on the show today. Uh, well, thanks for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet the, a couple of the Zuniacs.